this is uh, lecture 6 part 2 so in part 1 we have discussed laplace transform and we have solved some problems and also we have discussed the dominating poles now we'll solve some more problems so let us solve a problem where pole with the higher order so this is another example say gs equal to 1 by s plus s plus 1 whole cube s plus 2. So in this particular rational function, you can see that there is a pole at minus 1 where its order is 3. And you are asked to find what is GT. What is GT? So here we'll be applying inverse Laplace transform to find GT. So before doing that, we need to represent this GS in partial fractional form, applying that heavy side formula. So here in this particular problem, we have simple pole simple poles 0 minus 2. So in last lectures already we have discussed what is simple pole and pole at minus 1 of order 3. So for this particular problem, how to find GT? So our first step is to represent this GS in partial fraction form like A plus S D by s plus 2 so these are two simple poles and then k1 s plus 1 plus k2 s plus 1 whole square just look at this particular form that partial form that whenever you have pole with higher order then how to find that partial fractional form. Then K3 S plus 1 whole cube. So here we can just write that this is a problem with that is pole with high higher order. So now, so he applying that heavy side partial fractional formula, we can find what is A. So A is equal to S G S. You find it at S equal to zero. So then that would be half then b equal to s plus 2 so if you forget this heavy side partial fractional formula so i suggest you to see some standard book on control system or you can see books uh, on uh, signals and networks so here 
this is minus 2 that means the pole what we are finding here that b this b is actually associated with that pole minus 2 so that is minus 2 if you find it so then you will get again half so then k3 k3 is s plus 1 well, to the power 3 gs s you find it at minus 1 so that would be 1 so here i can write that formula that is k i equal to 1 by r minus i factorial d r minus i we are taking the derivative minus i s plus p whole to the power r gs and you find it at s equal to minus p so here i is equal to say 3 2 and 1 because in this case there are three coefficients there are three coefficients that is k1 k2 and k3 so that's showing this i equal to this 3 1 2 3 or 3 2 1 so now if you replace this i equal to 3 here and in your case r is equal to 3 because the order is 3 here you can see that this order is 3. So r equal to 3. So r is actually order. Then that would be factorial 0, 1. So here factorial 0, 1. And here also that 3 minus 3 that is 0. So basically you have only this expression s plus p whole to the power 3 gs. So here you can see that p equal to 1. So this expression you have and then finally you will get minus 1. So then in other case, what would be k2? So k2, so that means if you just put i equal to 2, so here you can see 3 minus 2 that is 1 factorial 1 so that is 1 then d here you can see that 3 minus 2 that is 1 the first derivative d d s and that would be s plus 1 q that remains same g s you find it at s equal to minus 1. So s equal to minus 1, the reason is this p is equal to 1 here. You can see p is equal to 1 here. So if you solve this one, you will get the value 0. Then what would be k1? So k1 is again r equal to r equal to 3 here r equal to 3 and i equal to 1 so that means factorial 2 so here that is 1 by factorial 2 then now here you have 3 here you have 3 and i equal to 1 so that means the second order derivative that is d2 by ds2 
and then the rest of the terms remain same. 3 gs and you find it at s equal to minus 1. So if you do that one, then you will get that value minus 1. So these are actually the coefficients that we have found applying that heavy side formula and these things you can see here. So after finding those coefficients, what is GS? So GS equal to GS equal to. So A equal to here, we found half. So half 1 by 2S. So here 1 by 2S and here half again. 1 by 2 into s plus 2 then k1 we get minus 1 k1 we get minus 1 so that is minus 1 by s plus 1 and we get k2 equal to 0 so there is no term this term is not there and k3 equal to minus 1 so this is minus 1 so minus 1 by s plus 1 q so let us write that is 1 by 2s then 1 by 2s plus 2 and then minus 1 by s plus 1 just we are replacing that coefficients 1 by s plus 1 whole q so that means whenever the GS is given, we can write it in fractional form. Then we'll apply, applying inverse Laplace transform. So if you apply inverse Laplace transform, then what will you get? So that is GT, GT would be equal to inverse GS. And you can just apply the formula that we have discussed in part one. So GT is equal to half. Here you can see that one by S and if you see the standard signal that we have discussed so 1 by s is the laplace transform of unity transfer function unit step so that is half ut then half e to the power minus 2t then e to the power minus t and for the last term, we have half e to the power minus t, t square. So this is that gt. And here you can just write one thing. That means as you have taken this ut here, so that means this whole thing would work when t greater or equal to 0 because unit step function is defined like this whenever t greater than 0 so then only you have some value and when t less than 0 it would be 0 so that thing <coughs> is clear so now we'll be taking another example where we have complex conjugate pole so this example, this example is the different type example in the sense in this particular rational transfer function, the poles are actually complex conjugate. So that means you have complex, complex conjugate pole.
so whenever you have that complex conjugate pole then you will see that in the coefficient that coefficient may be the complex and then you can write it in exponential form and finally you can get the final expression of gt in terms of sinusoidal or cosine term let us see so suppose a plant is given gs is given that is omega n square i am not taking any numerical value just i am keeping it in standard general form so later on you will see that this particular rational transfer function would appear in case of second order system and there are many physical systems like spring mass damper system series rlc circuit so there are many physical systems that can be modeled with this particular transfer function so in that case you need to find what is the time response so basically you need to solve the problem that we are going to solve so in this case it has two poles you can see it here as it is second order as it is second order so a is equal to minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a if you do that one you will see that it has complex conjugate pole so two poles are there and i am writing those that expression in partial form so that zeta omega n minus j omega n 1 minus so here instead of writing z i will just write zeta so this is one pole and another pole is k2 s plus z omega n plus j omega n under root 1 minus zeta square so two poles are one pole is here that is minus so s plus this one this is a factor this is a factor so you have that pole s equal to minus zeta omega n plus j omega n this one and in this case zeta omega n so basically a is equal to you have two poles that is zeta omega n plus minus j omega n 1 minus zeta square so these are the two poles so now how to solve this particular problem that means we are trying to find what is gt so gt would be equal to laplace inverse of gs so we are trying to find these things that means what is gt so first job is to represent this gs in partial fractional form and you can apply that heavy shade formula that means the factor is s plus zeta omega n minus that j omega n 1 minus zeta square so this is that factor into gs and you need to find it at s equal to zeta omega n this is one of the pole location omega n 1 minus zeta square so now if you solve this thing then you will get that omega n 2j zeta square so this is that first coefficient similarly if you do for the second one then you will get k2 
equal to minus omega n 2j 1 minus zeta square. So just applying the same method here for k2, we'll get this coefficient. So after finding that coefficient, so you can write what is gs. So gs, you just replace these two coefficient here. Replace these two coefficient here. That is here k1 and k2. So if you replace it, then that gs becomes omega n just taking common here to j 1 minus zeta square then you have 1 by s plus zeta omega n minus j omega n 1 minus zeta square this is that first term minus 1 by s plus zeta omega n plus j omega n 1 minus zeta square. So now if you simplify it, if you write it in exponential form, the first term, the common term remains same here. 1 minus zeta square. So now apply that inverse Laplace transform. So I think we can just write it here, apply inverse Laplace transform. So apply inverse Laplace transform. So if you apply inverse Laplace transform, then you will get that GT equal to this inverse Laplace transform of GS. Then just applying that formula that we have discussed in part one that zt equal to omega n this is that common term one minus zeta square x to the power minus zeta omega n t exponential that j omega n 1 minus zeta square t. So if you are confused about this inverse Laplace transform, so I suggest you to see some standard book and from there you can see if you take the inverse Laplace transform of this one, it is just like this one so here this is the term only thing is you have that complex conjugate pole so then you can have it in exponential form very simple and easy to understand and then if you simplify it finally you get that expression for gt omega n 1 minus zeta square e to the power minus zeta omega n t sine just we are writing that exponential form in sine t form that is 1 minus zeta square t when t greater or equal to 0. So this is actually your gt. So as I have just mentioned before starting this problem, that means this expression and this particular method is very important and it will be used particularly in your time domain analysis. 
what I'll be discussing later. And whenever you have that complex conjugate pole, how to find that GT? So this is that method and final expression. So I suggest you to remember this particular expression because whenever you will be solving any standard second order system. Always if you follow this method, then it would be very clumsy. So better to remember this particular expression omega n by square root under zeta square u to the power minus zeta omega n t and sine omega n t this one. So later on you will see that this zeta and omega n they have some physical meaning. Basically they carry some information of that system. So this omega n is that nat natural frequency zeta is that damping ratio that thing we will see later. So for the time being our objective is to understand that how to apply inverse Laplace transform to find GT whenever we have that complex conjugate poles and we found that this is that final expression. So now we will be solving some ordinary differential equation and we will consider two cases one is that first order system another one is the second order system so first order and second order system i hope you have learned it in your signals and networks course so first order systems means you can model you can represent that system using the first order differential equation so for example if you have rl circuit then you can represent it in first order differential equation form. And now we'll be learning how to find the response for that particular system, which is represented by a first order differential equation. So now we are going to discuss that solution of solution solution of linear ordinary differential equation. So this is very important and I hope you all know it and you know how to find the solution using classical method. So here we will be applying Laplace transform and inverse Laplace transform to find the solution. So there are two examples I will be taking. One is for first order systems, example one and another is for second order system. That means first order dynamical equation and second order dynamical equation. So let us take the differential equation, first order differential equation in standard form that tau dyt by dt yt equal to ut. So you can see that this is a first order differential linear differential equations all coefficients are constant and here I have mentioned this tau because it has some physical meaning so this is called the time constant that thing we will see later why it is time constant but at present our objective is to find the solution I'll be trying to give you some physical interpretations of that tau and whenever you will be finding that solution that is your objective is to find. So what is your objective? Objective is to find yt. Find yt. And here ut is the input. So from system theory point of view that means in mathematics you have learned already how to find that solution but from system theory point of view if you apply an input here ut 
what would be the response yt and this particular differential equation represents a physical system for example if you take one rl circuit then you can see that say suppose you have one rl circuit here we can see suppose you have one rl circuit so this is that voltage source so you can take it as a dc say dc source so v r and l so then you can see that v equal to say if current equal to i that is ir plus l di by dt so now i is actually the variable you need to find so you can just write it in this form say suppose vt equal to it r l i am just writing it again in terms of that t so better to remove these equations yes so this is that kvl and now if you just divide by 1 by r so you will get that l by l by r so that is l by r di by dit by dt plus it plus 1 by r vt so this thing this whole thing if you represent it as say suppose ut here now this is this tau here and this it equal to y so then you can see that this particular differential equation is coming in this particular form so the differential equation first order differential equation that i have taken it has many physical meaning interpretation but now we are just going to find what is yt whenever the input is ut and for the time being i'll be taking that ut ut is ut is unit step unit step so then what is your first step for finding this solution so taking laplace transform so if taking laplace transform we get so for finding this solution as it is dynamical system you must have some initial condition and we assume that y zero equal to zero that means it is initially relaxed y zero equal to zero so taking laplace transform what will you get you can apply that formula for the derivative if you take laplace transform it is tau s y s and then you have another term that is associated with the initial condition then for the second term you have that ys and if you take the laplace transform of ut if it is unit step then it would be 1 by s so now you can see as y0 equal to 0 because from y0 equal to 0 from this initial condition so then this term would be equal to 0 so you have that simplified expression tau s plus y s equal to 1 by s so now if you simplify it you will get that if you rearrange this expression you will get that ys is equal to 1 by s 
into tau s plus 1. So now your objective is to find what is yt. So you can represent this particular expression in partial form that is a by s that tau s plus 1. Now you apply that heavy side formula that is a equal to s y s s equal to 0 so then you get 1. Now b equal to tau s plus 1 y s y s and you find it at s equal to minus 1 by tau because from here you can see that its pole would be s equal to minus 1 by tau and you will get the value minus tau. So then y s y s equal to 1 by s just I am replacing those coefficients into tau by tau s plus 1. So you can write it in this form 1 by s just divide numerator and denominator by tau so then it will come in this form. So then apply inverse Laplace transform apply inverse Laplace transform so applying inverse Laplace transform you will get that yt equal to inverse Laplace transform of y s then for first term that is unit step 1 and for the second term you will get e to the power minus t by tau and it is for t greater or equal to 0. So this is actually the output that you would have. So that means whenever you have a differential equation first order differential equation like this suppose you have that RL circuit then if you apply that control input or if you have that input ut not control input it is any input ut forcing function then what would be your yt if you are asked to find it then you can follow this method first you apply laplace transform then go for inverse laplace transform and then you can have this expression so if you if you plot it then what will you see if you plot it so this is your time t and this is your yt so you have applied that unit step function unit step function you have applied so that is one so now the response 1 minus e to the power t minus tau so the response should be like this so whenever t tends to infinity the second term would be equal to 0 and basically your yt would be converging to 1 so now one interesting thing we can see here whenever say at t equal to tau so that means suppose here it is t equal to tau so this is t equal to tau so if you put t equal to tau how much value will get that is y tau would be equal to 1 minus e to the power minus 1 because here if you put t equal to tau so that is minus 1 
So then you have one minus if you take all the numerical values, you will get this one and finally you would get 632. So that means if you replace t equal to tau and this value equal to zero, if you replace t equal to tau, so this value is 0 0.632. So I hope you all know that the time required to reach 63.2% of the steady state. So I'll be discussing these things in detail later. So at t equal to tau, at t equal to tau, that output reaches 63.2% of the steady state. So steady state value is one. So if you take this is 100%. So at t equal to tau, it is reaching 63.2%. So this tau is called the time constant. This tau is called time constant. So actually from this particular example, what you have learned, whenever you have a first order differential equation, it has many physical interpretation and we have discussed that RL circuit, series RL circuit. And first you apply that Laplace transform and then we get that inverse Laplace transform and we find this expression. And here we have found another terminology that is that time constant. So time constant is defined like this. So it is the time which is required to reach 63.2% of the steady state. And here as the steady state is one, so this tau time is required to reach 63.2%. So this tau is called the time constant. So now we will be taking another example and this is a second order linear differential equation, ordinary differential equation. So this is example two. So again, it has many physical interpretation like series RLC circuit or spring mass damper system. So that is the second order differential equation. The second order differential equation here d2y by dt2 plus 3dy dt plus 2yt equal to 5ut. So if you have this differential equation and this particular description is not complete, the reason is you need to know the initial condition as well because without initial condition, this description is incomplete. So the initial condition we take, this is equal to minus one. And also you need the information about the first derivative of that one to describe this particular system or to complete the description of the differential, second order differential equation. So these two are the initial condition. These two are the initial condition and this is the differential equation. So like first order systems, so this is that forcing function or input and you need to find what is that output, that response. So let us see how to solve. So first we'll be taking that Laplace transform. So if you take the Laplace transform of this first order, second order derivative term, so it would be a square y s minus s y zero. We are just applying the Laplace transform formula. And here this is that first derivative at zero location. So basically it comes from 
that initial condition. Now, the second term, 3s ys minus 3y0 plus 2ys, the third term. And finally, we are taking it as unit step. Unit, we have taken unit step. You can take some other forcing function as well. So here, just we have taken unit step. So that would be 5 by S. So now, we replace that initial condition. So we replace this initial condition and that initial condition. So then what will you get? We'll get S square Ys plus S as Y0 equal to minus 1, that is S. And here you can see that Y dot T that is equal to 2. So then if you replace it here, so it would be equal to minus 2. Now 3 S Y S minus. So this is Y0 equal to minus 1. So that would be plus 3 plus 2 Y S equal to 5 by S. So now just rearrange this expression. And if you rearrange it, you will get S square plus 3S plus 2 into Ys. And if you take those terms on the right hand side, so 5 by S minus S minus 1. So now you can write it as Ys equal to minus a square minus s plus 5 and here you have s a square plus 3s plus 2. So then we need to find what is yt. So let us factorize denominator term so that means if we can find the factors of the denominator term so then that would be easy for us to represent this particular expression in partial form so here you can see that there are three poles at s equal to zero at s equal to minus one and s equal to minus two so if you write it in partial fractional form, I am just writing it here directly. That is 5 by 2s minus 5 by s plus 1, then plus 3 by 2s plus 2. So I ask all of you to do it on your own. You find the partial fraction form and finally you will get this form. So then apply inverse Laplace transform as before. Apply inverse Laplace transform. So if you apply inverse Laplace transform, then you will get that yt is equal to 5 by 2. Then 5 e to the power minus t this is for second term and for third term it is 3 by 2 e to the power minus 2t t greater equal to 0 so finally we got that expression so that means whenever you have the second order differential equation with some initial conditions, then if you are asked to find what is the output for this particular input, so then easily you can find that output applying Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms. Here one interesting thing we can notice. 
when when t tends to infinity so t tends to infinity then what happens this term would be equal to 0 and this term also would be equal to 0 so then basically yt is equal to 5 by 2 so that means if you plot this yt versus t then you will get that when t tends to infinity yt is coming 5 by 2 so this is actually the steady state value so now if i ask you to find steady state value for this particular system for this particular system then can you find it yes it can be found first of all you see if you take the laplace transform so you get the expression for ys is this one that means in a problem, numerical problem, if you are asked to find what is the steady state value for this given rational function, later on you will see that this is called transfer function. And you are asked to find what would be the steady state value if a unit step function is applied, then how to find that steady state value? We have already discussed that steady state value can be found out applying that final value theorem. So for finding final value theorem, we need to first see whether S Y S is analytic or not. Analytic in right half of so analytic in here this is closed closed means it includes that imaginary axis as well as right half of that s plane so s y s analytic in closed right half of s plane if this condition is satisfied we have seen that we can apply final value theorem. So here you can see that if you take S Y S, so this S one S would be cancelled out and basically you have two poles. One pole is at minus one, another pole is at minus two. So as it does not have any pole on the right half of that S plane and no pole on the imaginary axis, then S Y S is analytic in the closed right half of that S plane. So you can apply final value theorem on that particular function. And here you can see that S Y S means S will be cancelled out. So if you apply final value theorem. Here we can see. So if we. Apply. Final value theorem. Final value theorem, what will we get? That is limit t tends to infinity yt, which is limit s tends to 0 sys. So then you can see that what is sys? So you can see that sys equal to minus s square minus s plus 5. So that is minus s square minus s plus 5 divided by this s y s means s will be cancelled out so then s plus 1 into s plus 2 so s plus 1 into s plus 2 so now if you apply that limit what will you get this one would be equal to 0 this is 0 this term 0 so this term 0 so basically you will get 5 by 2 so now you can see that it is really interesting to find what is the value of yt when t tends to infinity you will get 5 by 2 and from this particular method also you can see that 
that expression is yt and when t tends to infinity you can have 5 by 2. So this is actually that steady state value. You can have it from ap applying uh, final value theorem as well as you can get it from the time expression. So the important thing is when you heard one second order differential equation is given, it has many physical interpretations like spring mass damper systems, RLC circuits or some other second order systems. Or you may be given one transfer function, that thing we'll be discussing in next class. So basically whenever this particular rational function is given, so this rational function actually corresponds to this differential equation. So that means either you can go in that direction or you can go along that direction. So that means whenever a transfer function is given and if you are asked to find that solution, you can find this solution or it might happen that, you know, one second order differential equation is given. If you are asked to find the solution, then you can follow these steps. And here we have seen one interesting uh, point that is from this time domain expression, we can also find what is the steady state value of that yt and we can also apply the final value theorem to find the steady state value. So let us summarize what we have discussed in this part two. So we have solved few examples, just applying Laplace and inverse Laplace transform. So first we have solved one example where pole with higher order is there. And then we find that solution gt next we have solved one problem where we have that complex conjugate pole and then we find that expression and as i have pointed out here this zeta omega n they are actually carrying some physical meaning and in control analysis as well as design you will see that this transfer this particular expression it is called transfer function so it will be appearing many where and you need to find what is that GT. So it is always good to remember that final expression, this one, instead of deriving it again and again. And the second thing what we have discussed that is solution of linear ordinary differential equation. We have considered two cases. One is that first order differential equation and we have discussed some physical interpretation and here we have given the concept of uh, time constant and then we have discussed that second order differential equation and from here we found what is the steady state solution and also we get that steady state solution using final value theorem. So thank you.